mass and you can put it there and it'll just populate that list. Peter says the torsion is thirty nine ninety five. Oh thirty nine. It's cheaper than I thought. Um, torsion, yeah. I highly recommend torsion. Um, it's like I said, we use it internally. Breakpoint debugging in script is immensely helpful. Um, but you don't have to. I mean you could just use notepad. It's it's script. So here's the functionality that makes this happen. Basically, there's a callback when it gets added to the scene. Um, this is where it sets some default values. It takes your defined value, sets it to an internal variable, things like that. Um, this gets very specific, but right now, this behavior is this big. So this handles most of it, including an explode function, a spawn function, things like that. Behaviors can call other behaviors. so. Uh, behavior is a namespace on the object, so I can have like a set of uh, like a, a methods on one behavior and call them from any other behavior I want. Um, the nice thing about behaviors and their whole behind the scenes functionality is it checks every behavior for those namespace functions, which is why when it gets an on collision response, it'll run through every single behavior if it has it and trigger an on collision on it. Basically, it has multiple namespaces. That's just the basic script behind it. And most behaviors are about that big. Um, so one of the things people run into, you mentioned before, is, is kind of creating modular scripts. Um, so before in Torrent, before behaviors, you'd create one big class, and it would have all the functionality you need for that class to work. Um, uh, in this case, if you want to go to behaviors, you do singular things, like, you know, takes damage, deals damage. If all of a sudden deals damage, you just is something we use for the ball. We use it for a projectile in a shoot 'em up game. We use it for a projectile in a little tank shoot game. You can use it for anything that needs to transfer some sort of numeric value to another value and then have some sort of response. Um, you could even do uh, text fields and actually do script callbacks and expose it to the other. So there's a lot of potential if you use behaviors, um, specifically exposing them to your editor. Um, that's the big benefit because there's a nice interface for you to basically customize your editor for your specific thing. Any questions about this specifically? Okay. I'll just show you some other demos that we include. How is it to port these games to the iPhone? I know you guys have an iPhone yes. app too. Does that, does that work in sync with this builder? So. Yes, so ITGB um, is the version, which is basically this for the iPhone. It's the same editor, just customized with some iPhone options. Um, a lot of people, so to actually push the iPhone, you need to be on the Mac. Um, but a lot of people develop most of their game on the PC, then go over to the Mac, because TGB does work on Mac and PC, and it's pretty much black box. The platform is hidden for you if you use everything that's there. Uh, it happens everything behind the scenes. Uh, iPhone, there's some special considerations. Uh, we have an SDK and documentation on how to take advantage of the specific iPhone stuff. But a lot of people actually do just develop it on the PC and then push it over the Mac. And, and depending on the size of your game, right? So don't quote me on anything in a couple days, maybe a week uh, on a bigger game. You can get it on your iPhone from there. Um, unless you want to just work with the Mac iPhone. Um, so you got to buy two licenses for this to have one on the Mac, one on the PC? Uh, no. no. So we, do, we don't separate our Mac and PC license. Okay. We do separate. So our iPhone license is a separate license okay. um, that you have to buy on top of this or you can buy it as a package. Um, we do have a version of Torque Game Builder working on the 360, um, just like our 3D technology, um, which is our 3D side. Uh, our, 3D, our 360 port is based off of our own internal development of Marvel Blast Ultra, which is an Xbox Live arcade game that we did just after launch of the 360. Um, so and we also have a Wii port for uh, our 3D technology and our 2D technology, um, which is available. So a lot of people basically we recommend if you're looking for other platforms, um, those are separate licenses. Um, and uh, obviously you have to get licensed through like Microsoft and Nintendo for those cases. Um, we, we suggest you just pick up TGB, you know, start building your game. Maybe pick up ITGB if you have an iPhone and you want to push to it because. You know, it's, it's a cheap way to push. 
um, to it on the 360 and B side and stuff. It's something you can talk with us today when you're ready for it. Um, but uh, we also have Torque X, um, which Paul is familiar with, um, which is a pretty nice platform to push to the 360 without having to worry about having to get a deprecated and getting licensed. That's a completely different pipeline, but we do have a version. Um, Torque X we launched when XNA launched. We were working with Microsoft about six months before uh, XNA launched to do compatibility. So we, we really do like XNA. It's a great. Well, you guys use this in Sony or you have your own stuff? Uh, just on my independent project. On the independent side. Okay. So, um, so there is the XNA platform we do support. So, here's the game I briefly mentioned. Mm -hmm. I demo. And uh, everything here is, I just basically downloaded a re re our last release version, so everything here is what you get when you buy KGB. It's one of those that were really popular in Flash games and stuff a lot. But we had a lot of requests for how we should do this in Tor. Um, but it, this is a demo you get, so just some scripts and functionality. This is all built in script. You can do quite a few games in DGB without ever touching source code. Um, it, like, like I said, the next version of Tor 2D, we support real-time networking. Right now we do, we have what we call turn-based networking, which is just RPC calls. So you can network. Um, and we do include a checkers demo. There's a tutorial how to build a checkers game um, using our networking system, um, which basically is just sending information back and forth between the client. Um, you could push that to quite a few limits, but obviously that breaks down when you want real-time positional updates. Definitely breaks down if you want physics. But for, for strategy games, even for RTS games, where a lot of the, the updating is kind of going to be faked, um, you can still use the existing network. Chief This is just one of those fun to watch sometimes. So apparently I'm signing. A random type game. That's a little more interesting. So. So these all come with TGP. So basically, I literally just downloaded the latest version, release version, and installed it actually right here in front of your eyes. So all this is what you get. Um, so if you're looking at making a game, highly we recommend you look at these examples. Um, so like this Blackjack demo gives you some examples on using interface elements. Um, one of the cool things with this is it does showcase a little bit of using TGP as like a GUI system. Um, a lot of people, so Torque does have its own GUI system. Um, the TGB editor itself is built completely in the Torque movie system. So it does have quite a bit of, of, of capability. It doesn't support like animated GUI elements well. Um, a lot of people choose 2D games especially just to use 2D, uh, the engine is the GUI system. Um, there's a text object. Um, there's some limitations, um, but you can do quite a bit. Um, in fact, in one of the games we released, uh, Rack Em Up Road Trip, which is a uh, cool game released on MSN, with TG, with the early version of Torque 2D, we just did an all kind of like a Flash style GUI system, all in TGB. Um, 